And have you ever wondered to yourself, what's the origin of the pride flag? What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you are new here, my name is Anna. I post queer quirky content here on this channel each week and it's pride month. So if that's something you're interested in, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. Roll that pride intro. Alright, and for today's video, it's Pride Month, there's a lot of history behind that, and I thought, why not share 10 LGBTQ Pride Month related history facts? Some of these are just like quirky and trivial, and then other ones are like really important history pieces. So, if you want all the info on LGBTQ Pride, not all the info, some of the info, 10 info pieces, then let's get started. Okay. Fact number one, why is Pride celebrated in June? You may have asked at some point. Well, Pride is celebrated in June because the famous Stonewall riots took place in June, late June actually, of 1969. They lasted for like around six days, June 27th to July 3rd, I believe. If you don't know what the Stonewall riots are, let me give you a quick rundown. Basically, the Stonewall riots happened at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village. I feel like I can never say that right. Greenwich? Greenwich? Greenwich Village. <laughs> Basically, owning a gay bar was illegal and police would do these raids that would come in and shut down a gay bar for that night. If people weren't wearing three articles of their assigned gender, they were taken to jail. So queer people were like, hey, that's messed up. They got tired of it and literally started riots, fire, throwing bricks, breaking glass. Not the most classy or dainty, but if you lived in that time, can you say you wouldn't have done the same? Like, come so basically the reason why Pride is celebrated in June in most places is to commemorate the like pivotal gay liberation movement from the Stonewall Riots. And have you ever wondered to yourself, what's the origin of the Pride flag? So the Pride flag made its debut in 1978 at a San Francisco, California Pride Parade. A good old guy, Harvey Milk, asked his colleague Gilbert Baker if he could come up with or create a symbol that unified the LGBTQ Plus community. So Mr. Baker, holler at Mr. Gilbert, he chose the rainbow or a rainbow flag that actually had nine colors to begin with, but he created that pla pla that flag to help symbolize all the different communities within the LGBTQ plus community. So what the heck were all those nine colors and what did they stand for? I have my cheat sheet here. <laughs> the top color was pink and it represented sexuality, just as a whole sexuality. The second color was red and it represented life. Third color, orange, represented healing. Then yellow represented sunlight because we're bright as heck. We're bright people. Green represented nature because support mother earth. Turquoise represented magic and art. I did not know that. And then blue represented harmony between the entire like community, like harmonizing together, not musically, but emotionally. <laughs> and then purple represented spirit. Oh, it was eight. I was looking at my notes and I misread it. They were only eight colors. <laughs> But then later down the line, pink and turquoise were taken out of the flag just for like recreation and quality of design reasons. So that's it. I mean, there wasn't like some crazy big reason why they were taken out. It was just for design reasons. And I bet you've asked yourself, hey, what was like the world's largest pride event? Well, in 2011 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, they had a record of over 3.5 million attendees. That's insane. That is so many people. 3.5 million people? That's huge. And then also there is something called the floating pride and that is taking place in Amsterdam where their pride floats literally float along a river that is called this. I cannot pronounce that and they have literally over 100 floats decorated floats that exist like what that's crazy oh and by the way you also may not potentially you may not know who harvey milk is let me tell you he is one important human being so important that there was a movie made about his life literally called Milk that was made in 2008. But Harvey Milk was known as the first openly gay elected official politician in California and I think in the US or at least was well known enough to be that pivotal for being the first 
openly gay person to be elected in office in California. You catch my drift? <laughs> and he was known for his activism, for his work in office, just like being overall someone that had a very powerful voice, especially for the queer community when that was like not a thing at all back then. I mean, it wasn't like his main objective, but it was definitely like a part of his politics. And unfortunately, he was assassinated by gunshot. I think it was like two to the chest, to the head or two to the chest, two to the back. He was shot, killed, which was horrible by a man named Dan White. So Mr. White, you are a poopy person, okay? You suck, you know? You just do. And basically the story behind Dan White. So he was a former Vietnam vet, of course, thank him for his service, a former police officer, and also a former person who was like a politician of some sort. And then he stepped down from his role because he just like could not get behind the activism, homosexuality, becoming more accepted and being talked about in politics. So he was just like, F this, I'm getting out of here. He decided to come back and ask the governing mayor of whatever town, I think it was San Francisco. His name was George Mons Kuhn. His name was George M and he was the mayor. So Mr. White went to talk to the mayor to be like, hey, I want my spot back. And they got in an argument and Dan had actually come into the building, passing all of the metal detectors by going through the basement so that he didn't have to like, you know, set any off because he brought a gun with him and they got into a heated enough argument that he ended up shooting and killing the mayor and then he went to Harvey Milk's office where they got into an argument and they shot and killed him as well. So Dan White killed multiple people that day and was a big old butthead and sucks but Harvey Milk was definitely a man for the history books. And I don't know about you but I've never heard of the mother of pride but there is a woman who was designated to be the mother of pride. Her name was Brenda Howard. She was a bisexual woman and she is known for her activism just within the LGBTQ community period, but she is most known for her role in organizing the Gay Liberation March on Christopher Street in New York. This was like the march, like the beginning right after the Stonewall riots. And she was a woman that really like helped it. I don't know if she helped the very beginning one, but she definitely was a part of the earlier Gay Liberation marches, which is now known as Pride. So fact within a fact, Gay Liberation March is pride. They're the same thing, called one way, then another. But basically I like read something that described her perfectly. Like she helped lay the foundation for what is now celebrated as Pride Month. And she also co-founded the New York Bisexual Network in 1988. So rock on Brenda, you're the best, you awesome. Fact number eight, how many US presidents have actually recognized Pride Month, right? Like you don't think about that and then you're like, oh my gosh, wait, how many? Two. Well, three, but we're not gonna talk about the third. We all know that he doesn't even mean it. So two presidents. First one was Bill Clinton. He recognized Pride Month in the year of 1999. And then most recently, President Barack Obama, he recognized it two terms, many years. He rocked it out during his presidency, the like rainbow lighting of the White House. This was iconic. Everything amazing. Like what? Props to him for doing that because he rocked that out. And that was really awesome. So I don't know about you, but I've seen this. So this is the old pride flag and this is the new one, which is the pride flag redesign. And I'm sure if you've seen it, you've been like, what's the meaning behind it? Basically the brown and black stripes at the top are now meant to represent queer people of color because they need their representation. And then the like trans colors are really just there to represent the trans community. It just creates a little bit more of an inclusive flag overall. I think think there's always room for improvement and growth and making more people feel like they're included and if this flag is it then like go off let's use this one instead right like me I'm privileged enough to be like yeah I'm okay with this one whereas queer people of color or trans people would feel like they have more privilege if they had this flag so who am I to say either way right and also the redesign came from someone in Philadelphia which is super cool it's like three hours away from here so go Philly all right rounding out the wonderful LGBTQ facts I was like searching of the facts. Obviously these all didn't just like come from my 100% knowledge, but I was like, do you think like the first ever openly gay person was documented? So I Googled it and I'm pretty sure I figured it out. Let me get his name right. So excuse the phone. First openly gay person, his name was, mm, here I go, Carl Henrich. 
Henrich? Carl. <laughs> and Carl was born in ninth. Nope, was born in 1825. Man's old, okay, man's old. But he was born in 1825 in Germany. Throughout his career, he ended up being an administrative lawyer for the Kingdom of Hanover, but he was eventually let go because they found out that he was gay. And he, I'm pretty sure, like talked about gay rights within his work, but not super openly, but they still found out. And obviously that was a long time ago in the 1800s, that was not accept it. I also read that he was kind of known as being like the pioneer for the gay rights movement. So go off in the 1800s with your gay rights. In 1867, I think was actually like when he became the first openly gay person. He was basically like in the Congress of where he was asking for a resolution to repeal like anti-homosexual laws there. And obviously he was shut down. Everyone was like, you're insane. What are you thinking? But yeah, he was the like first documented first known openly gay person. Obviously there were plenty more gay people, but openly out there in the history books, gay person. <laughs> huh, we did it. Do you feel smarter? More educated on LGBTQ plus topics? I hope you do. It took me like hours to get all that information and to find everything and to fact check it. And that was actually really fun. I learned a lot more than I expected to because I personally thought I knew a lot about the community and there was a lot in there that I didn't know, which is like really cool and interesting. And I think it's always fun to like teach yourself more about the community you're a part of, no matter what community or communities you are a part of. I hope that you learned something and I did an okay job at explaining most of these. <laughs> and if there are any other LGBTQ plus fun facts that come from around the world that I didn't mention and you would like to mention, leave them in the comments down below. Let's all get educated together. Let's all learn about this beautiful community, especially during Pride Month together. And yes, it is happening. I am shouting out one individual in each of my videos. So I will be inserting a clip of me shouting out one of you from my last video here. Okay, go. All right, so if you want that to be you next video around, then three things. Subscribe to my channel, turn your post notifications on, and then leave a comment in the comments down below saying, proud to be myself, because that's our slogan this Pride Month. And of course, you know what to do. Subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up button, turn your post notifications on, and I hope your Pride Month's going well. All right, everyone, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.